it's never fun to be in a hole, but you know, if you're in a hole with friends, it's it's not it's too better. Bad. Yeah. <laughs> That's better than being in a hole alone, for sure. I agree. <laughs> so I, I guess just to bring some context to all of this, I was recently laid off in a video creator type of role. And then very shortly after, you announced that you were laid off from a very similar type of mm -hmm. developer education type of role. Tell me a little bit about what you were doing um, for Planet Scale. how long, mm -hmm. like what the arrangement looked like up to that point. First of all, thanks for having me. It's a real pity that I'm here because uh, under the circumstances, <laughs> but I'm glad to finally talk to you. So at least that, you know, at least that's some good that came out of it. So yeah, I just got let go a week and a few days ago from Planet mm -hmm. Scale. Um, based on their public blog posts, they let go of a lot of people um, in sales and marketing. Um, and you could scour, you could scour LinkedIn to find all of those people. Every single one of them is wonderful. So yeah, I, you know, this is first, first layoff. Um, mm -hmm. and up until that time, um, I had been basically video guy. I mean, the, the last three months I was on paternity, but before that, when I was still, you know, still working, um, I was video guy and what that kind of looks like for me was when I joined Planet Scale, I actually came into Planet Scale with the beginnings of a course on on MySQL, which is, mm. you know, a database flavor. I had been independently working on building up the content and this mailing list for a course, and then I joined Planet Scale and kind of brought that in-house. And that's what I spent the first many months that I was, Interesting. you know, employed at Planet Scale working on was like this huge 64 video, 8 hour wow. like pure education course on mega my course SQL. mega course um, yeah and it just like it just smashed it was the best thing <laughs> it was the best thing ever um and so from there i kind of like i was like wait a second i really love you know i really love the the medium of teaching on video but from there i was like what if you know i took over the planet scale youtube and so we you know, we had a YouTube that had maybe a thousand subscribers, mm -hmm. um, and I took it. I took it over um, probably in June or so, and grew it up to like thirty-seven thousand before. Whoa! Before I got, yeah, it was crazy. That's before fast. I got, like, oh, That's amazing. Mm -hmm. It was so fast. Yeah. So um, was doing all their video content. I ended up getting paired with an incredible editor, Steve, the editor, who's much more than an editor, but it's like funny to say Steve, the editor. Um, <laughs> so me and Steve, me and Steve, the editor kind of like tried to conquer the world and it was a lot of fun. And, you know, I think objectively we did a pretty good job. Um, so that, that, that's what that's, you know, that's where I ended there. I was doing YouTube stuff. I had seen some of your work going into that, you'd been working on that MySQL course for a really long time. Like, mm -hmm. were you planning on doing all of that independently anyway, like releasing that course on your yeah. own before the planet scale thing? Yeah, I was. Yeah. The basic storyline is like, I'm a, I'm a developer. I'm a primarily Laravel backend developer mm -hmm. who happens to love databases. You know, my dad was a DBA. So it was like growing up, I was always like, around databases which is an insane thing to say um <laughs> so it. like i've i've always loved it and i did a few conference talks on databases um primarily from like the developer's point of view which i think is okay. an interesting angle and mm -hmm. when it came time to like talk to planet scale about working there i was like hey y'all i've got you know, I've got this mailing list and I've got the beginnings of this course. Like here's all of my outline and all of the content for the course. I haven't recorded anything, but like I feel icky, uh, going to work as a database educator and then on the side selling database education. Like I don't feel icky about yeah. doing stuff on the side mm -hmm. in general, but when yep. it competes with my job, I'm like, why didn't I give all of my best content to my job? Like that feels weird yeah. to me. Mm -hmm. And so I, you know, on the way in, I made it, I made that clear and we figured out a deal that worked. Then it was way easier to do the course because it was like, that was mm -hmm. my nine to five job. And yeah, so imagine yeah. like recording all of that nights and weekends and stuff, which is <laughs> which was my plan and then doing it nine to five with the support of a team and of like doing the website and stuff like that. Yeah. It just made it a lot easier. Now I know that that, that right there, that thing that you described is something that a lot of people struggle with. And it's something that was very kind of like intoxicating to me as well, stepping into like similar role. Now I, I wasn't mm -hmm. bringing a fully planned out course into the mix, but mm -hmm. there was something very intoxicating about this idea of like, Oh, I could, do this thing that I like 
on the mm -hmm. side during work hours and then i guess maybe have that time back for <laughs> for family mm -hmm. or whatever uh, totally like kind of integrate yeah. those a little bit i think that's kind of like the intoxicating piece of like the I, i've started calling it the corporate creator <laughs> role mm, yeah um, i like that slightly derogatory but uh -huh, accurate <laughs> uh -huh. yeah it's just right on the edge it's perfect yeah <laughs> it, what did you realize in that space kind of coming to it from that mindset the mindset of like oh hey this could be a perfect integration of everything mm -hmm. that i like doing mm -hmm. what have you learned in that time since afterwards i think there are different things i learned during and after um mm -hmm. i think the easy thing we can start with is after which is if a business makes a business decision you could get cut immediately mm -hmm. like that's that's just reality and like <laughs> Yeah. Would I prefer to still have my job? Yes. Can I blame Planet Scale for that? No, nah, not really. Like, <laughs> you know, they they decided <laughs> yeah. based on their blog posts, they decided that they were eliminating the free tier. And a lot of the work that I was doing was top of funnel work, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like, let's get our name out there so that people know about us so that they sign up. Like, yeah. that's a very obvious playbook. Everybody knows that that's the playbook. And if the business changes their mind on what makes sense for the business, you can get let go. Yeah. And like, I knew that going in. If you like, if someone doesn't know that going to a job, especially in America, that you could be let go for any reason or no reason at all. <laughs> yeah. Like that you have to, like you have to learn that eventually on the yeah. flip side, this should also empower you to quit a job that you don't like. Because I remember, <laughs> Like I remember, I remember when my, my wife and I first got married and she hated her job. And one of the things she kept saying was like, I'm just really gonna leave like them in a lurch because they don't have anybody to do this stuff that I'm doing. Yeah. And I'm like, J Jennifer, her name's Jennifer. I said, Jennifer, if it made sense, they would fire you in a second. Mm. And like, unfortunately, that is what you owe to them but because that is what they're giving to you. Yeah, <laughs> and like, yeah. I, you know, I've known that for, forever and it just so happens it finally got me it's like yeah well, that's the game we're all playing and i've been playing it successfully but now i got got and it's like no oh, it's too bad i kind of got a little bit on this on twitter the other day that there's a disingenuine attitude i think inside of corporations mm -hmm. where there's so much talk about culture and like building a team and like there's all these visual metaphors that bring you into this like cognitive state of feeling like you owe these people something yes. more than just the work that you're producing today yep. mm -hmm. and it is a lot trap. <laughs> <It's a> trap. <laughs> it is a trap. It is planned. It is a trap. Yes. Especially, especially if the company, which, you know, Planet Scale didn't, if the company goes as far as to say we're family, that mm. is a trap. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. It is wonderful to work with people that you really know, care, and respect. At Planet Scale, I was, and I'll say this freely, the dumbest person in the company. Like <laughs> I worked with some people that like you would go check the MySQL bug reports from like the late nineties and their names are there. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm like in the bowels of researching yeah. for this course. And I'm like, Oh, I work with that guy. <laughs> like I'm on a, I'm on a page that no one has been on in 15 years. That's like hosted on some archive. And it's like, Oh, Slow me. I guess I could just DM him. Like, <laughs> it's wonderful to work with people who are conscientious and caring and trusting mm -hmm. and like smart and good at what they do. And I had that at Planet Scale, but fortunately, Planet Scale never claimed this. But if your company claims that you're a family, like, mm -hmm. eh, that's a trap. Now, I think, I think the uh, the 3D chess move or like the Mega Brain move <laughs> is you have to know that as an individual, you have to mm -hmm. know that like. This is not my family. This is mm -hmm. capitalism. And I could get I could get let go at any time for any reason. Yes. But if they want to call me a family, that's fine. They'll call me a family. I'm gonna mm. I'm not gonna believe it. But like, am I gonna go to HR and be like, y'all have to stop using these terms? <laughs> like, no. Like I'm here to do my job. I'm here to like be helpful and make and create value for the enterprise. Yeah. But like I'm not the kind of person that's gonna like like rage against the machine, I'm going to look at the machine and be like, nah, I don't really buy that, but I'm going to do a good job. Like I'm going to put in my good faith effort and yeah. try as hard as I can. But like, yeah, I'm not really your family. I have a family <laughs> at home. 
I, you know what? I got one of those. I think I'm good on yeah. family right now. I got so many kids at home. I don't. I don't need an extra family here at work. Um, <laughs> So that's, yeah, that's I've really never been in one of those places that like tries to trick you into being yeah. family, but I see it. I see it a lot on Twitter. I will say I have been at one of those. A lesson that I learned from that time is that I was a little bit more prepared for it, but the havoc that it wreaked on my family mm. was truly devastating, and it it really that reinforced like what a toxic trap it is because it didn't just affect me right like it wasn't just you know me but also impacted my family who like made friends at that company yeah. and like my kids made friends at that company and it's like yeah and now i'm the now i'm on the outside and it's right. like all the like who, who do they pick that's rough that is really rough. rough and and it's one rough. of them's paying you right so it's it's yep. kind of makes the decision a lot easier <laughs> yep so that that's my post learning is it could happen to you at any moment um you got to be prepared for that. Something you said, like specifically in the U.S., <laughs> literally any moment. I, I, and I think for that, literally any or no reason at all. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The, the first time it happened, I you know contracted a lawyer and I said, "Hey, is there any type of like wrongful termination you know thing here?" And he's like, "Just take the severance and find someone who wants to work yep. with you because that's yep. especially in California. There's like n nothing we can do." Yep. I was like, "That is." Truly wild, wild, horrifying, yeah. and all right. <laughs> there, there is such a thing as a protected class, and mm -hmm. uh, those those do exist. But mm -hmm. you know, it's it's a, it's employment at will. Like, and yes, that's yeah. it. That's how it goes. Yeah. Well, let's so, go back into kind yeah. of like what you learned in the middle of it. Um, what I learned in the middle, yeah. One huge thing that I learned is people want to connect with people and not companies. Mm. And so a big part of why the story worked was because mm -hmm. I was very forward. Like as an individual, I was yeah. very forward in the story of the videos and the course mm -hmm. and everything like that. And a, a, a place that I see a lot of like primarily dev tools or B2B SaaS falling down is they are creating content, but it's this cold behind the corporate veil kind of yeah. content. You can't go on YouTube and compete against Mr. Beast with a webinar. Like you just, you just can't do it. And like the competition, the competition is not uh, Vercel or Cloudflare or whoever else is a dev tool company that has a YouTube channel. The competition is Mr. Beast and mm. videos that may or may not be true about dinosaurs and ancient lost history. And it's like, I kind of want to watch those. And so if you go on there and you're like, Hey, here's a recording from our webinar. That's 48 minutes. And it's like, <laughs> I don't want to watch that. Yeah, and that's no. what I see a lot of people doing. I think the other thing is you can succeed as a B2B content creator, SaaS YouTuber. Like you can absolutely, like I had a great job. Now I don't have it anymore. So you tell me, but I had a great <laughs> job. And I think as long as you try really hard and like you're conscientious about the fact that you represent the brand. That was one mm -hmm. thing that was always like on my mind was yeah. in some way, in some regard, I'm always representing the brand. Yes. And so like when I respond to YouTube comments or when I say something on Twitter in the back of my mind, I'm always like, I need to be, I need to be careful about, you know, what I say. And that didn't come from them. That came from me. Like I want to, yeah faithfully execute my duties. Mm -hmm. um, it just so happens that it's not, it's, it's a lot easier for me because my personal brand is not like cynical shit poster. And like there, <laughs> there are, there are cynical shit posters. There are regular shit posters, but none of those are my brand. My brand is very like earnest and forthright and transparent. And so it makes it a lot easier to like not have to worry about representing a company poorly sure. accidentally. Um, there's not but a I huge think conflict you, there. Next, there's not a huge conflict. Yeah. Like I'm not, I'm not wishing that I could go on Twitter and flame a bunch of people and thinking, oh, I shouldn't <laughs> because I have a job. Um, right. But I do like when I respond to comments on YouTube and people are terribly mean. I want to be mean back, but I'm like, yeah, I'm just gonna let that go. The world is open for this kind of content, and nobody, mm -hmm. nobody's really doing it super well. It's just a matter of like finding finding the niche to get in there and, and create it. But I think a lot of companies are looking for it because they're seeing, man, video is the future and we suck yeah. at it. And I'm like, yeah, y'all yeah, kind of do suck. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm curious if, and I'm going to press into that a little bit. Like, did sure. so, so on one side going into it, we have 
these two separate facets of your life that are mm -hmm. now have the possibility of being integrated. Mm -hmm. But now in the middle of it, you feel almost like a unique pressure of those things being integrated where it's mm -hmm. like you are, totally. as you said, always representing mm -hmm. yourself and someone else there. You, mm -hmm. you come as a pair. Do you feel like the exchange was worth it? I can only speak to my experience mm -hmm. and I feel like the exchange was totally worth it. Interesting. Yeah. I think I got a lot of ancillary benefits out of being the um, unofficial face of planet scale people find my personal channel on youtube and they're like oh you're the planet scale guy and i'm like <laughs> yeah like yeah i am and <laughs> you know like and trust me already and yeah. i did that on someone else like someone gave me a paycheck to create yes. content with my face in it from nine to five really can't be overstated how how nice that is yeah and in terms of like growing my personal platform i did a mm -hmm. lot of that on the back of planet scale content. Because like yeah. when I created a planet scale video, I want to tell people about it. And people yes. find that on Twitter and they're like, oh, this guy creates good content. Let me follow mm -hmm. him. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, I feel like the deal, the deal that I had with Planet Scale, like if the downside is like, ah, I should be, I should be kind of careful. Like I should not say necessarily everything I want. The <laughs> upside is just it's is just so much higher. Yeah. The fact that I got to spend a lot of time honing my craft and putting it out under someone else's mm -hmm. name but with my face on it that was a good deal for me um, yeah yeah and they they were very like plan skill was very good to me it was a great job um mm -hmm. so i think the trade-off was worth it far beyond very what I, yeah i think it's helpful in that it is realistic right and so anyone who's kind of curious about this type of work um, they can use that as a framework for determining what value they can get out of it, um, mm -hmm. which is very important because, you know, as we've already established, you can lose it for any reason. And so knowing yep. knowing what the end looks like kind of helps you decide mm -hmm. what the start should look like as well. Something I'm curious about is you talked about the importance of really great content and how mm -hmm. companies are looking to fill this role, but then really aren't very good at it yet. What does the role of this like corporate creator look like at its best and more personally do you think that's something that you will do again or will you mm. choose a different tact that's a good question i think at its best and this is coming from my own you know history and preferences and desires i think at its best um it looks like educational entertaining ish content and the reason i say educational and entertaining ish is because in my heart what i want to do is teach people like yes that's that's where that's where i get excited that's where i'm like mm -hmm. oh this is really fun let me especially <laughs> like let me go learn something and mm -hmm. then come back to you and teach it i'm like yeah that seems that seems awesome to me <laughs> and so the business case for that and this is where I see, I think a lot of companies go wrong. I think the business case for that is nobody is going to watch your videos on how to do X with Y if they don't know what X and Y are. You know, how to integrate Next.js and Auth0. And you're like, uh, I, I mean, at this point, everyone knows Auth0, <laughs> but you're like, ah, I don't need to do that thing specifically right now, or I have never heard of that. And so people yeah. are like, I'm not going to watch that. That feels like one prong of a content strategy, which is like okay. resources, like as search intent or tutorials for people who are asking for it, right? If the other prong, and that prong is fine, but if you're trying to use that type of content to get broad reach and distribution and appeal, I think you're missing it. Mm -hmm. And what we did at Planet Scale is very, very broad educational, like, my sequel content it wasn't right. how to set up planet scale with django because it's like who's planet scale don't know never heard of them <laughs> um but if it's like how to make your database queries a hundred times faster yeah everyone is gonna at least think about it sure. everyone's yep. gonna at least think about it and if they're like in a world where databases are important to them they're gonna click on it the the other thing is you have to be entertaining ish right because again mm -hmm. you're competing with you know, videos about dinosaurs or like tunnels underground. It's like woodworking. <laughs> this is all the videos I watch. Um, and you got to deliver the value, but you have to do it in kind of like a fun way because otherwise yeah. people are going to be like, 
oh, this is this is so boring. Um, <laughs> and so adapting the message for the medium, I think, is really important. The course that I did is not on YouTube, and it's mm -hmm. like it's still me, it's still my personality. But I didn't think a lot about how do I make this entertaining because it's like this yeah. is a this is a different type of resource. Sure. Um, and so that at its best, I think it's entertaining, it's educational, and it's like you learn about the product almost as an ancillary thing. Like I'm teaching yeah. you how to be better at my sequel. It would be great while you're here if you heard the name Planet Scale. That would be awesome. But if you don't, at least you walk away with a lot of a lot of value regardless. It's a very mature way of looking at content is that you know where you place things and how you package them up is very important and being able to walk into conversations knowing where something's going to go and what mm -hmm. purpose it serves um, is really important and i think probably one of the things that we spent the most time churning you know around at chromatic was the idea of like okay where does this where does this live who is it for all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff and yep. you know we made a bunch of mistakes there but that like is the whole conversation <laughs> and like the the yep. thing that you do is just kind of an artifact of like deciding like making those decisions for the platforming and packaging of things. Yep, exactly. I think people take video and put it anywhere that supports video. And it's like, <laughs> I think there's, there's an angle. Like you have to, yeah. you have to have a different angle if you're gonna try specifically to do YouTube, is, is mm -hmm. in my opinion, I think. Your second question was what? Am I gonna do it again? Yeah, I, basically, yeah. 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 It's a good question, Shane. It's a good question. <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't know. And yeah. I, so this week I've, I've talked to as many people as I can, which I think is, uh, the wise move. Um, mm -hmm. I feel a little bit torn about like just going to do it all again. Um, mm -hmm. and so I don't know if I'm going to go do it all again, frankly. Um, I kind of feel like, man, I, I did the thing. Like I did the thing I set out to do and I've, I, you know, freaking crushed it. And like, what's next? Um, mm. The counter argument to that is um, I have four children who are under three years old and a wife that works harder than I do, but she doesn't get paid for it. She's a stay at home mom and mm -hmm. somebody has got to make the money. Right. So yeah. <laughs> the, I think the open question is like, can I find somewhere or something that like aligns with what I want to do with my life and can mm -hmm. I go there and do it all again and have a lot of fun doing it? Or mm. do I need to, find a new challenge which could be doing some sort of um some sort of like my own thing out there mm -hmm. so that that's mm -hmm. that's the open question i don't know i try to shy away from like stage of life but it's like such an important part like piece of this puzzle oh, is yeah. that these decisions become so much harder the more life is kind of like stacked on on you or or the more yes. like decisions that you've made that now have long-term consequences <laughs> if you will yes. right like you know mm -hmm. have you know five people who are depending on you to make a decision that supports you know supports the whole thing that you've you've mm -hmm. made you've you've opted into you've made that decision right um yep. it really does make this type of decision harder because i think you know if it was if you were just making decisions for you given the audience that you've built and the support that you've seen over the last um, couple of weeks it may be a lot easier to say like oh yeah mm -hmm. I, I got everything that i need to do my own thing and that may be true to an extent but like how much like like are you able yes. to do it enough to fulfill Correct. the responsibilities that you've already chosen and have to like enjoy Correct. fulfilling as a, as a parent yep. husband you know how does that how does that weighing on you in this exact moment where you see something that you could reasonably do, but don't know mm -hmm. if you could do it to the extent that you would need to? Yeah, it uh, it weighs on me like a ton of bricks um, or like a very heavy dinosaur. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it, it's it's hard, right? Like, yeah, yeah. Not only are they like. Not only are they like, um, my family relies on me, of course. Mm -hmm. um, but like my wife has put her trust in me. 
Mm-hmm. And like, that's pretty heavy, you know. <laughs> yeah. That's that's pretty that's pretty hard to like be um, be flippant about to be like, all right, the kids, you know. The kids don't know what's going on. They're two and a half yeah. and four months old. They have no idea what's going on. Um, I still feel the weight of like being their father, but to like almost an even more real extent, my wife knows what's going on. <laughs> she's not. She's not two years old, right? She knows. She knows what's going on. Um, oh yeah, yeah. And the way that the way that she's like. The way that she's like, I trust you to make the right decision. It's like, oh, like how how lucky am I? Like how lucky am I to have a spouse that's so supportive? And what like a like what a weight on my shoulders to to bear. And that's my responsibility. And that's like, yeah. I will bear up under it. But like mm-hmm. these things don't come easy, you know, like. No. I've known meager times. I've been in college before. I've, you know, <laughs> shared a house with eight other dudes. I can do meager times. That's fine. <laughs> this yeah, is not yeah. what the rest of the family signed up for, right? We right. can't go into a, a hacker house or, like, go crash on somebody's couch. Like, kids need shoes, you know? Kids got to eat. We have yeah. to have health insurance, for goodness sake. So, <sighs> yeah, it's, it's a lot. It's a whole – and, like – I've got type one diabetes. Like we're not cheap. Mm -hmm. We're not a cheap family. Um, Mm -hmm. So there's a lot, there's a lot that goes into it. And so um, like just, you know, just go out there and pursue your dreams. It's like, yeah, I, I agree. Cosign, but like, (laughs) it gets harder. Like life stage is super important. It gets so much harder. Um, And it's a, it's a hardness that I am happy to experience because of the joy of being a husband and a father, but that doesn't take away the hardness of making the right Mm. decision, you know? Yes. Yes. That is, um, I I just want to honor your honesty with some honesty because I think that one of the hardest things for us is my daughter, she's 10 now, um, was born with two genetic illnesses spontaneously occurring. Mm. Um, but you know, we spent the first five years of her life, like living in a hospital, Mm. you know, and like getting cancer care and like all that. And, um, these things, um, I think these are the things that are so hard to, um, so hard to communicate. And like what it what it means to like put your trust in a company, I guess, right? Ah. <laughs> um, because I think that you know a lot of us get angry when these things happen, and I think a lot of times we're not sure why. And we're like, hey, these are mm-hmm. these are people like they've dedicated their life to you know th- this thing, and you know whatever. At the same time, like we're adults, and we understand that mm-hmm. like a thing has to make money. Like this is about business, right? And business yep. is getting money. And if it doesn't make sense, it doesn't make sense. And we understand that as as hardworking adults. Mm-hmm. But then on the other side of it, there is this re- very real thing where everyone is piecing together a very difficult puzzle. Yes. And it, so many times it goes like invisible because we're trying to show up and do the best work that we can in the the, the way that we've promised to but like these things are on our mind all the time like you know how do i take care of my daughter like if i only have a week left of like insurance and then it's up Mm -hmm. to me to find four thousand dollars a month just for that before i can even think about paying rent like Mm -hmm. (laughs) the fuck that's a big problem (laughs) right (laughs) yeah it's it, it it's a disaster and it's unbelievably it's an unbelievably heavy weight to bear yeah it's brutal yeah <laughs> i yeah i i honestly don't exactly. even know <laughs> like i feel like maybe wrapping it up at this point would even you know be a disservice to the things that we've like talked about but 
Let's, let's leave on a high note. Will you hit me with something else? Give me, give, give me another one. We're going to have to go pretty far from this topic to hit high note. But um... yeah, yeah, yeah. Just we got to <laughs> climb out of the crevasse. So just give me something. Something that I really enjoy about you and your personality and the hopefulness that you bring to the internet by being a sincere person is I think it's easy to, to look at you and, and see that you believe in yourself and you believe in others. And I'm very curious, like through, through this experience and having the opportunity to see people be excited about you and where you're going mm -hmm. next, um, what has that taught you about who you are as a person um, in a good way? It's been a little bit eye-opening, I'll be honest. Um, I've never been laid off. I've never publicly hunted for a job. Um, mm -hmm. I've never super come out and been like, hey, y'all, I need some help. And, you know, I've done that in various, like, small ways with, like, oh, I'm a new video or a new course or whatever. And, like, people have been like, hey, that's awesome. Way to go. This is a much different and bigger and more real way of, like, y'all, I need, I need some help. I don't think my mental model of, like, how I'm perceived had adjusted in maybe the past, like, year, year and a half. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um because like I'm in it day to day, right? I, I am me sure. all the time. I am working. I've got two newborns. I've got two toddlers. Like I don't really spend a lot of time thinking about what other people think about me, which is a good thing and something I've actually had to practice. Like just <laughs> sure. do, do your thing. It doesn't matter. Um, and so this inciting incident now of me like losing my job, which – just comes at the end of a storyline that people have been following where it's like, mm -hmm. you know, he has twins. He's he got another set of twins. He's <laughs> got rheumatoid arthritis now just as a treat. Like he's on yeah. paternity leave and then he gets laid off. And it's like, I've been transparent all along and open mm -hmm. all along. And I think what I have learned about myself is, um, I think I learned that a lot of people really like want me to succeed. I knew that I knew that I had friends online. Like I I knew yeah. that. Um and I've enjoyed that thoroughly. I don't think I knew that there were so many people that were like I got your back. Yeah. And that to me <laughs> just is like whoa. Like it's just totally yeah. like it's a step change function difference of like what I thought about myself as like a, a personality on the internet i was like yeah. i think people like me because i'm positive and encouraging and i'm kind of funny sometimes and that's like great but then seeing all of the support publicly and privately and it's just like oh i think people like actually are on my team and that feels really really encouraging oh man <laughs> i love that so much it's and there's nothing good about the circumstances but I'm grateful that you have had an opportunity to see how much you mean to people as a person and how much they're excited for you. Like that's, mm -hmm. that's a, that's a just truly beautiful human thing. And, um, I'm, I'm really grateful for that. <laughs> yeah. You, you and me both. Yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> One of the many surprises of being laid off is like, I feel, I feel pretty good. Like I feel pretty good. Would love a little bit more money, but I feel pretty good. You know? <laughs> yes. Well, speaking of that, I know that you have a course out that people can purchase. I do. Uh, yeah. Tell us a bit, tell us about that. How can people kind of contribute to this yeah. adventure for you? How can you fund, how can you fund the healthcare? <laughs> um, yeah. So I have a course out um, at screencasting.com where I teach people how to create high quality, beautiful screencasts in a very efficient way. Um, because that was one of the things that I think I, 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 I realized during my time at plant scale was like, Hey, I'm pretty good at this. Like, this is kind of like the behind the scenes. Uh, how do you, make the video like you have to bring mm -hmm. your own knowledge of like what you want to teach but like if you have that knowledge i can teach you how to make really good videos so you can find that at screencasting.com it is of course a uh video course um so you'll watch me you know teach you how to do all of that and if you want to mm -hmm. otherwise follow me uh twitter uh is where i hang out all the time especially now um and my <laughs> handle over there is aaron d francis um you can find me there so 
yeah, I think that's I it. I love it. Well, Aaron, thank you so much for um, having this conversation with me. It has been um, an honor to get to know you a little bit better. And um, I, I am rooting for you and wishing you the best. Yeah, thanks. Rooting for you too. Thanks for having me. <laughs> thanks. Thanks.